Hello everybody and welcome to Unit 4 Biology Area Study 1. Today we are looking at acquiring immunity. So this video is going to follow on a little bit from the previous video posted um, and it's going to talk about the third line of defense, um, which we also call the adaptive immune response. Uh, it's also going to go through the lymphatic system and we'll also look at natural and artificial immunity um, as well. So I'll just start off with the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is basically a large network of vessels throughout the body um, through which a fluid called lymph flows. So it has two primary functions. One is to act as a transport system for our APCs, so our antigen presenting cells um, and pathogens, and to serve as the location for what we call clonal selection. So the lymphatic system is a network of vessels and organs across the body that fight infection. Um, and we've basically got what we call primary lymphoid tissue and secondary lymphoid tissue. So its overall role is to return um, fluid to blood. It filters tissue fluid. Um, it is the site of antigen recognition. It transports white blood cells around the body. And it is the site of lymphocyte maturation so looking at b and t cells and where they mature um lymph fluid itself is a fluid that contains lymphocytes so those white blood cells um and it is similar to plasma and interstitial fluid the lymph nodes they're basically bean shaped structures within the body um, and they filter by trapping particles in fibers so they're where white blood cells recognize and destroy those foreign antigens. Those nodes themselves also produce lymphocytes. And if they are swollen, so you might notice sometimes your lymph nodes um, could get swollen, that would indicate infection and rapid production of lymphocytes. So looking at the actual lymphoid tissue, we said this primary and secondary. So primary lymphoid tissues are your bone marrow and your thymus. So the bone marrow is where the B cells mature, okay? Um, and the thymus is where the T cells mature. The production though of those B and T cells is happening in the bone marrow. So the production is in the bone marrow, but the maturation for bone marrow B cells and thymus T cells. The secondary lymphoid tissues that are important are the thymus, the, oh, sorry, the lymph nodes and the spleen. Okay, so you can see that here in blue um, and the tonsils as well. So this is where your antigen presenting cells meet the lymphocytes and the lymph nodes and the spleen is where clonal selection and expansion um, and initiation of the adaptive immune response will occur. So if we're talking about the adaptive immune response, that is what we call the third line of defense. Now, there is an entire video from the previous study design um, a little bit earlier on. I think I posted that video in 2020, which you can also refer to. Um, this one will form more of a summary. So the third line of defense is what we call the adaptive immune response or the specific immune response, okay? And it's initiated by the presentation of those non-self antigens to specific immune cells of the adaptive immune system. So there's two new unique features of the adaptive um, immune system, and that's specificity and also immunological memory, which is really, really important here. So the summary of sort of what we call we have the humoral immune response and the cell mediated response as well um if we talk about the humoral response first it's basically where we have our selection of a b cell the stimulation of those b cells through the production of cytokines by a second um selected t helper cell then we have differentiation of that selected um, B cell into plasma cells and B memory cells. And then that production and release of antibodies is what is going to defend against specific pathogens. So an antibody is what is specifically binding to the antigen. Okay, And they bind to what we call the antigen binding site. So similarly to how enzymes and substrates bind, where they're specific to one another, an antigen and an antibody okay they also fit like a jigsaw piece um some key functions of antibodies that you need to know 
is neutralization. That's where antibodies can block the sites of pathogens that are used to attack um, host cells. We have agglutination where antibodies can bind together with antigens. Um, as well, we have immobilization where antibodies can restrict the movement of pathogens around the body. We have um, opsonization where antibodies can bind directly to the surface of a pathogen. And we have the activation of complement proteins where antibodies attracted to the surface of pathogens can facilitate the action of complement proteins. This is where we have our membrane attack complexes or our MACs. So this is more of a summary, again, of our humoral and our cell-mediated immunity, which you can see here. Um, I do encourage you to pause this video and have a look here, but also refer to a video that I've posted, and I'll link that below as well. But looking at the major cells that are involved for humoral immunity are our B cells, okay, mm -hmm. and our for cell-mediated um, immunity, there's a much more focus on our T cells as well. In terms of acquiring immunity, there are um, a few different categories for which this can sit. So we sort of split into natural and artificial immunity and then active and passive strategies as well. So if something is natural and active, that means it's naturally occurring and your body has to create antibodies. So an example of this was when we actually get sick, our body is forced to create those antibodies in response to that infection, okay? Artificial active is where our body still has to create and have an immune response, but it's initiated what we call artificially. So that's through a vaccination, okay, which might contain a protein coat or a foreign antigen to stimulate the immune response, but you are still creating antibodies. And that's why it's active. Your body actively has to produce antibodies. With passive um, immunity, however, natural passive would be something like a naturally occurring process. So antibodies being passed on from mother to child during breastfeeding or crossing the placenta. Um, but artificial passive is just the injection of antibodies. Our body doesn't have to create them. They're just gained. That's another little summary for you as well. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer some questions over there as well. Otherwise, have a great day.